what's up? Uh, it's your boy out for the day. It's another episode. I'm sorry, I have very awkward starters, guys. It's very hard because I have a lot of things that I do, so I have to remember how I start each thing. So it's very hard to get all these things right. But anyways, man, that's not wasting the time. I'm with my two awesome friends and host with me. Um, Tony and C. What's up, guys? It's good to be with you guys again. Um, it's good to see you guys are still wearing the same clothes from the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> this December life got you hard, eh? <laughs> We're having a mental conversation right now. Anyways, do you guys go to the heat wave of Buele Kaya? I don't even go to such things, so... Never been I've to, never opened I've up. been to one heat wave. I actually did business in a heat wave. Yeah. We worked with um, Uli Tayaya doing, what's this company called? Turn up cabs. Yeah. Yeah, we ran that for some time and we actually got a contract with them. It didn't go too, too bad. So that's the only involvement I had with. I've before. never. So y'all don't party? I'm trying to get away from the party scene. Not like I don't party, but I party in a like sophisticated way. Oh, yeah. You go to white parties, you know. No. With wines. No. Where y'all drink wine and. I I. Free flowing clothes. I I I party at home by myself with myself. Okay, that don't sound right. It's a party. TikTok doesn't count as a party, but <laughs> it's fine though. <laughs> It's cool. not a party. It's not a party. I can't deal with crowds. First of all, I'm four foot eight, so I would get easily lost. Guys, the reason why I'm asking this is because um, I'm I'm like um, like terrified of the rate that um South Africans are moving at, um, you know, with the whole alcohol thing. Oh, okay. Uh, the way we like indulge alcohol, it's scary. Because now, now it's moved on even from alcohol as much as people drink, but there's also drugs now. People are gone into it heavy. Um, my neighbor, mm, yeah, next door, <laughs> um, had a mental breakdown, like started attacking people and, and all that. And um, it's scary to, to encounter because this is a guy I've known for over 20 years, man. Like... And to see him like lose his mind like that, it's it's quite scary. And the cool thing is though, um, every everybody is like trying to like shun him out because he does drugs and whatnot. And the the only and then there's the, the family who doesn't want to take responsibility for the whole thing. They just like oh, it's because of that friend and that friend and that friend. But he said something to me which like kind of like caught me off by surprise, he said, all the years that I've known you, you've never, ever, ever been like nasty towards me. Even when I was doing that. And that like shocked me for a little bit. Yeah. I was like, I've never? I was shocked by the fact that he thought that. Because <laughs> um, I had a friend who was crazy into drugs, and I tried to get him out of it. We took him to the lab and everything, but came back a couple of months, went back to drugs and everything. Like, I'm, I'm willing to try and help you to get out of this situation, but if you don't get out of it, I'm going to tell the person, like, I'm going to catch you when eventually you stop, bro, because I can't keep, like, trying to hold your hand while I'm still trying to build the future here. And he said, one thing that we appreciate is, like, I've always like treated him the same way. Like, even when everyone was like angry at him and saying this and saying that, that I, I've always been kind to him and always treated him like a brother. It made me realize, hey, maybe we need to change our approach with, with these people. Maybe they are a way of yeah, like mental health, man. Like mental health is a crazy thing, man. Because I remember when I was suffering from um, from depression. Because my uncle like died just like two houses away from here, like practically died in my arms. And uh, the reason why it hit me hard was because I didn't have a chance to mourn him. Because as soon as it happened, everybody went 
emotional and I had to like now step up and be the at least emotional person in the house and deal with everything. And I, I was basically the, the support system for everyone. Yeah. And I never got to deal with all of that. And I remember I was depressed for a while, man. I was depressed for a while. Yeah, I was suppressing all these emotions because I can't be emotional. Um, I have to take care of the family. And then when there's people here, I have to take the kids and like, so I can never be alone where I'm mm -hmm. like, dealing with that. Yeah. And the work, like, yeah. Work had its own. <laughs> that is a good thing to give someone that's going through such a situation space to be alone, Oganye. Do you bring them closer? Uh, that's what I want to find out from Honestly, I don't know. Because I don't know how to deal with people on drugs because I've never done such things or even drive for that matter. So I don't even know how to deal with these people. So I just deal with them how I deal with the place that I have a relationship. So I don't know. Say about it. They're, they're always the voice that's of reason. That's a lot true. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first of all, there's a huge connection between the mental health and drug abuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the leading role of why people go into drugs is no because of mental yeah, like, illness. I'm just like tired of everything and I just I don't want to feel anything anymore. So yeah. you want that thing that makes you numb. Go away. Yeah, yeah as an as someone who has yeah serious mental issues, I am that person because I, I I would like go hard at it. I would like I would rather drink like I have no liver. Yeah. And go to sleep, than face whatever problems are busy like plaguing my mind and stuff. Yeah. So um, most of the time, when someone is doing that, it's a cry for help. Yeah. As much as they can't say about okay, hi, can you please help me? It's it, it is a cry for help, and that's when they need to be surrounded by people yeah. most, and not be left alone. Because <laughs> when you're depressed. Actually, for me, depression, I don't like being depressed because um, I don't like being left to my own devices. Yeah. My mind is filled with negative thoughts and I, I see things in a negative way. Yeah. And all I want to do is just like find something that's going to take it all away. And it's not usually alcohol. It's like prescription medication kind of vibe, like painkillers. So it's like I would rather like literally be in dreamland and mm -hmm. like, face everything going on. So it's, you have to... Don't just be like, oh, we're to let them suffer in their own thing. We, do, we don't want to be like near like a person who's going through all of that. Mm. Try to sit them down and like try to understand the situation that they're in. Try to get into their mind if you can. But let them know that they're not alone. Because the moment you like leave them alone, they get... The thing is, people think people with depression or people with mental illness are just stupid. Yeah. They are the most observant people you will Biggest ever mistake. meet. Biggest like, mistake. You, they see everything in like every, like like a vampire. Everything is heightened, so all the senses are like I can hear you talking about me. I can see the way you're acting around me. Like you're not touching me more. You're not doing this and this and this. So you you have to be with them. You have to be there for them. Yeah, prescription drugs. He mentioned something to me because um, when he went to rehab, he said the reason why he can't. Like just after we had because when we were there, first of all, this guy is suffering from whatever mental illness, and then they tell him that he's schizophrenic and that he's bipolar. I've known the guy all my life. The guy's not bipolar, but they're telling him all these things. So now they're pumping him with drugs, like heavy. So now he gets addicted to those drugs. He gets out. He doesn't have them anymore. So yeah goes back to the ones that he can find. It's a crazy cycle. Now, how do we deal with this problem? Because it is a problem. Everyone. Well, I think in, like, the South African society, how it's set up, yeah, well, yeah. we've spoken about this. I think speaking solves a lot of problems. Yeah, well, like, even in your situation that we just spoke about now, you said that you needed to be alone. Yeah, well, so... You could have easily just got an SR space and today we don't know what type of friend you would have had just by simply giving you that space. Yeah, well, but at the same time, your family needed you. You couldn't step out of that role. Yeah. But one thing that could have helped you 
is actually just talking but hey i feel like this you know of which that's what we don't do even now like we've never spoken about the situation yeah. of which it's, it's quite scary you know that you can't even say hey bro i need you know that that, that space can you create that space because it's not about what you can do it's what the people that are around you can do for you yes. you know it's never all on your shoulders to get yourself through that time so that's the only thing that i will say yeah and i've not said this before but especially like in the black community we don't speak about mental illness we don't yeah. we do not you you do not say you're stressed you do not say you're depressed <laughs> you will get you, you will get smacked <laughs> upside the head if you say you're depressed you're depressed and you don't but what you know it's not mm-hmm. for you mm-hmm. and i i want it to be something that people can speak openly about like they i feel like a lot of people could have been helped a lot of lives would have been saved mm-hmm. if people actually spoke about what they're going through but there's that thing first of all where you don't talk about your mental health mm-hmm. you don't talk about depression and secondly you you're you're told at home you don't talk about your problems to other people mm-hmm. your problem is your problem mm-hmm. and it mustn't leave your mind you try to face it That's why he's the most of the time, how some of the words are going to be. Like, no, you're so depressed. Mentally, he's not okay. Little pieces that you can't see. Everyone, everything is glued back together, it's okay. But to you, you know that there are some pieces of you missing and you can't find them and they're scattered. And go, they've already scattered, like they're scattered and then they strip it away and it's gone and you'll never see that again. It's very, very painful. And as much as you try to put a brave face for everyone, Mm. you're cracking at the seams, you're like bursting. So it's just very sad. Mm. Well, if you were to face the same situation today, how would you actually deal with like with it? I just want to situation I went through. Yeah. How would you so, deal with it now, having all the knowledge that you know? I'd find someone to talk to. <laughs> I'd find someone to talk to. that How much is year you? and a half it was terrible, man. Because I honestly didn't have anyone to talk to. The thing, is, the, the thing that depressed me the most was the fact that um, I had so many responsibilities that I didn't really have time to like feel what I needed to feel. So every time like, okay, I'm alone now, I'm not doing anything. Either my phone's gonna ring or someone's gonna come knocking on my door, need this, need that. I'm like, okay, turn it off again. That on and off thing, it was crazy. By the time I finally got to like feel everything, it was overwhelming. Because I was carrying so much, man. But the cool thing is what did help me, what didn't drive me insane, like most people, like, drive them into substances and stuff like that, was the fact that there was family around. Like, you know, extensive family, people who you don't know. So, like, because they're family, they don't treat you like someone died. They're like, hey, I'm trying to see blah, 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 blah. Make jokes and whatnot. They don't treat you like someone died. So that helps. Believe it or not. Because the, the, the problem with death is everyone treats it like death. Like, oh my God. Oh no. I'm so sorry. Do you know how many times you have to hear that? Until the burial. That's all you hear. As soon as someone enters the door, like that's all you're hearing. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh no. They, they're going to try and reminisce about the person like, Trust me, I have enough memories, okay? Yeah. I don't need all that right now. But that's just the situation that I was telling you guys with a uh, with friend of mine. The yeah. one thing that peed them off like the whole time was actually being asked by, are you okay? Oh my word. How can you be okay when someone I, just died? Actually, literally, I'm a guy. Imagine yeah. how inappropriate this guy. I had to squeeze his hand, bro. Like mid-conversation, the man who had patience. Like you'd see that he wants to answer abruptly, but... You have to calm him down. Because he mentioned like how many times was a Muslim in a day. It's so 
in a week. The culture needs to change, man. That's it honestly needs true. to change. My my sister died, and my 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 other my, my elder sister, because yeah. there's three of us, so it's the middle child that died. So the eldest one was in Johannesburg, yeah. and I was at home with mom, and her, and my nieces. Yeah. So I had to. I did not have time to cry. I, I did not have time to like wallow in my misery. My mom was crying, the children were crying, the the neighbors were in the house crying. Yeah. So I had to like step up to the plate, take the cell phone, make phone calls. Then I would not be like, okay, the person has died and wait for you to cry. The moment I'm done, I'm hanging up because I know you're going to wail. I don't have time for that. I have to move on to the other person so people can know what's going on. And in that in that moment, everything was just like... It, no custard in my head mm. and I had to be that way until my elder sister arrived from Joburg mm. and even then I couldn't break down mm. I, I let my whole family break down but I was still that one person who's like you know what not yet not yet wait for them wait yeah. I had the funeral exactly. going on I was I was literally everywhere I was checking the day before the funeral I was checking if the pastors were there for mm. the for the whole like like prayer that was going to happen i was checking if we had enough biscuits enough tea mm. for everyone are people cooking is this 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 happening and even on the day of the funeral i had to wake up early and check if everything was okay it Man, was you just the things you're that not really in that mindset yeah. the fact that you're the one that lost but you feel like you're taking care of strangers and other people that are coming in you're taking care of them like come on I guys I had, I had an exam that was my yeah. second year in college I had a language exam to write and I had to study while there's people at my house day in, day out mm -hmm. saying they I'm sorry, he's asking are you okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm fine. But behind that I'm fine is there's a lot going on. I'm mm -hmm. like, yes, she died. Yes, this and this is going on. But guys, I have school. Mm -hmm. I have to go. I have to study and go write my exam. Like the pressure that I was under. I it, after the exam, I literally went to like the bathroom and that's when I started like cracking and just crying. I was like, okay. Why didn't you offer an extension at school? And that person was like, no extensions. I, I don't want that. Yeah. When, when I tell myself I'm going to do something, I have to do it at that point in time. I can't just let it slide. So, because if I asked for an, ex like an extension, I would not have been able to study properly for that thing. I'd be like, oh, I'd be so lazy because everyone mm. wrote it and I was not under mm. pressure now. Mm. So I'm going to go sit in that exam room alone. So I was like, mm -mm, I have to do it right now. I think it, she used it as a coping mechanism yeah. sort of sense that keeping busy because from the way that she speaks about it it's like she was avoiding mm. actually avoiding my feelings yeah just she was literally avoiding it because when they come they're like dude we're right here yeah. we are right here and they come and they hug you and you want to give into that hug yeah. and just cry yeah that's what caused the depression with you i think because you yeah. sat with that thing too long every and single infested, day infested. yeah infested. But the the thing that hurt me the most was having to tell my grandmother that her son's dead. Because no one, like the whole community was here when this whole thing happened, right? And everyone's like, here. Like, when you mean this is like 3 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. And eventually when he died, everyone just went emotional. Now, all the elders are around. Like, I'm like the youngest one. <laughs> and nobody wants to tell her. Everyone's like, yeah, I can't tell her that her youngest child is dead. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Because she keeps asking, like, what's the situation? What's the situation? <laughs> I looked at her and I said, listen, he's gone. What hit hard was the way she cried. Like, you, you get used to someone crying, right? But then there's a certain cry when someone loses a child, man. When she cried like that, that broke something in me. Although I couldn't cry at that moment because I have to comfort her. But when I heard that cry, man, I knew like she's broken. Broken, broken, broken. Because she's lost people. But this is her child. And the last one. So I knew for a fact, like, yeah, yeah she's I, I not okay. Mom, I mean, a, a couple of months after mm. the funeral, she's like, I will never be the same because. As a parent, I'm not supposed to bury my child. My yeah. child is supposed to bury me. And, and there's, there's a the different time. kind of pain when mm. you lose a child. Yep. It doesn't matter if they were good or if they were bad. Th that matter. person was inside of you for mm. nine months. And you've had like a, a special bond. 
So when you lose that child, it's over. Your life and your will to live is just like dwindling. And I was like, Ugh. yeah. My pastor told me you, you don't get over it. You just learn to live yeah. with the pain. You're like an autopilot. And That's you have crazy, little things man. that trigger. Yeah. In the house, I remember because my sister passed away in April, and her birthday was June. Uh. things and trying to cope with whatever I'm mm. trying to cope with whatever that's going on in my life I'm I'm killing myself and I'm instead of taking my mom's pain away I'm giving her mm. more pain so I was like okay do not be selfish and that's how I came out of it but look like it's South Africa and how they deal with that you know South Africa is not the most helpful place mm. it's a matter of information mm. because they have different ways of mental health mm. if you go into a Knowing the options that you have, I think it's something that I always try to manage my manage my child. Even if even though there's a small gap mm. between us, mm. the amount of money I'm making right now is helping me more than something else. Mm. Yeah. that they willing to go that way exactly. proves they really don't have a real support system. Yeah. 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 Exactly. now from now we'll be speaking about how I did that because mm. it's still there 
even even like like people who can bond to find each other, like it's real fun. Man. It's real fun. <laughs> it's real fun. Because the truth, it's been really made with it. And brought a new beautiful town there. Yeah, I will not come with those things. There's a reason, yeah. The same thing, that, like, that's the reason why I was asking you guys did you go to the like, hip wave and you know, the People don't go to those things just because it's fun or whatever. Most of those people are too drunk to even work or something. Like, I've had friends who've gone to this thing, like, and they're always telling me like, these horrible stories of how people are. How to behave on this thing. Like people get pissed off drunk to the point. Like Jay told me like uh, a chick ended up in her car. She was butt naked. She did not know how she got there. Like they they left the you know, somewhere else like, and when they got back, this chick is in the car and she's naked. She's asleep asleep. And they're like, yo man, they start asking each other like, you go <laughs> And all of them don't know, hey, who is this? And then, like, they try to wake, wake the girl up, like, yo, what, what are you doing here? And this girl's like, where am I? Now imagine, she's naked. Now imagine if they were, like, different males would be like, oh, we want here. Oh, wow. And rape them. Hey, hey. Mind you, which did happen. That's a crazy thing about it. So emotional. I know. I know. Um, then, 13 reasons why it was something that inspired me a lot. So much. You know, um, though it was mainly based on bullying and um, and rape, those were the two like leading things um, behind the whole series. But they were campaigning for the two things because um, there are a lot of people who get bullied. And there are a lot of people who who get raped, and some are too terrified to speak up about it. Now, we have the same problem in our country. Like we we all went to school, right? We all know it was a culture for me. It was either you were bully or you were being bullied. All your fear is managed not to be evil. Yeah, to be caught in the middle. Only a few managed like to escape 
the that part of of the lifestyle. Now, if we can like get into these schools and actually deal with these problems, um, for instance, you have. Uh, Uh, well, I lost my train of thought. Yeah. Yeah. We need to find a way to get into these schools, right? Like, for instance, um, spanking girls was a culture in school. It was. It was. Like, already we were, we were practicing something that um, that leads to the the whole like men not respecting women. And consent and all that. Like, if we can get into the schools and actually speak to these kids while they're still young, like, and teach them, like, respect females. Like, respect one another. You don't have to bully each other. Like, the kids that bully actually are kids who are either bullied at home or they feel too stupid at school, so they feel a way, like, I need to feel powerful again, so let me beat up the nerd who clearly has a lot going for him. So we need to actually like try to change the whole education system. Because the education system, this whole thing of a child is stupid based on his grades and whatnot needs to change. Because he's, he's driving a lot of kids insane. Like do you know how many kids like kill themselves because of reports? Especially the matriculants. Oh my word. <laughs> Bruh. It's crazy. Um, but we really need to change the justice system, I mean, the education system, and actually sort, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's all a process, <laughs> it's all a process. Yeah, we are going to do the one that we don't need to take this I'm not saying we need to do that in school, speak to this kid, but we also need to speak to the people. Things would be different, and you know, I would do things differently. I would make friends who would accept me. But then, oh, high school bullying is a different level. Mm. It's like bullying on steroids. Um, on high, in high school, you're judged on whether what clothes you're wearing, who's your mom, um, what position you hold in the school, um, who you're dating, how good are your grades, whatever subject you're doing. Yeah. So I was like, I was the quiet one. Mm. And I, but I was friendly to everyone. Mm. And I've had people, you know, come at me because of that. And you don't choose to be a piece of cake. Yeah. They're just like, yeah. they're like, oh, you think you're better than us because you're like friendly, friendly. Yeah. And I, mind you, I was a nobody. Yeah. I come literally from nothing. And now all I have is my academics. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? If you tried, like, you're going to pick me up, but I'm going to show off and give you like an ac academic level. Mm. And that pissed people off. I was cyber bullied. I had someone go to my Facebook profile. I don't know how. It had to the rooms. All of my pictures. Mm. Dad wanted to sue for defamation because he knew I'm always in the social media. And they were ending my career before it even started. And mm. um, in round 14, I was raped. And I've had people bring that up and make fun of it. In high school. Mm. Um, when I was 16, I got hit by a car. And by the time I was 17, people made fun of that. In high school, they would literally pick up everything that happened yeah. and make and turn it into something to laugh at. And I kid you not, you guys, I was so, so depressed. But in my head, I was like, whatever is going on, yes, you're depressed, but show off in a different way. Be the way you can be academically. Do whatever you can with your academics. And those people now, where are they? I have people who used to beat me up at school, who literally serve me food and restaurants now. Mm. I have those people drive a taxi that I'm not. Mm. I have those people literally put my groceries in a bag at a stall and stuff like that. Mm. Where so you, as, as, if you're a bully, I feel like it, you, they need to find the, the even though they need to find something to help you. Mm. Have that made 
没有那就是买 IG 的账号，这个就是那个会考虑一点。Alright， then um we we have the meeting now with everyone. It's like okay, I've met with everyone, and I've heard everybody's um thoughts on how to better the right person. Oh, he says um, but there's one person that impressed me out of all of you. Like all of you talk to each other so much, and there's only one person who was honest with me. I said, "That's Randy." What? <laughs> no, why did you do? These are all like the majority of the people all cry about because this is bad, this is bad, this is. Now they were given the opportunity to actually speak. Yeah, lunch was definitely the lunch was definitely one of the best. I think we were really proud about that one. But you, you said that I was the only one who didn't know how to speak the truth to him and actually not have that. Oh my God, I'm talking to the boss like uh, some one of those things arrested. The reason why you felt like it's because I speak the truth number one. Number two, I don't speak for myself. I speak for everybody. Now the biggest issue we have in the workplace is we work with cowards, man. Because you don't have someone who's gonna stand there and like, guys, I want, I want this place to be a good place. What's the problem? Everybody like, yeah, yeah. So you gonna be the brave one because you're gonna speak. But that's how it takes. So seriously, if it's coming from one or two people, so it needs to be like okay. A lot of people are unhappy about this. So the reason why, okay, the only reason why some workplaces are changed is because of us. So now we need to become finest cowards. And this one's better. If you have a problem, you have to speak your mind. So that's the only way you're gonna create change. Ha ha ha! I will call my dad. <laughs>
Lunch was definitely one that like mm -hmm. people were really crying about that one. But he he said that I was the only one who managed like to speak the truth to him mm -hmm. and actually not have that oh my god I'm talking to the boss like oh, mm -hmm. so I'm only gonna say the nice things. The reason why he felt like it's because I spoke the truth number one. Yeah. Number two, I didn't speak for myself. I was speaking for everybody else. Yeah. Now the biggest issue we have in the workplace is we work with cowards. Yeah. A lot. Man, because you're going to have someone who's going to stand there and like, guys, I want, I want this place to be a good place. What's the problem? Everybody's like, oh. No one wants to come out. Really. Yeah. Then you're going to be the brave one and you're going to speak. But they can't take it seriously if mm. it's coming from one or two people. Mm. Yeah. It needs to be like okay, a lot of people are unhappy about this. So the reason why, mo okay, let me not say most, some workplaces don't change is because of us. Because, man, we work with some spineless cowards, man. True. People looking at backbone. True. Yes. Out, out. True. You need to have backbone. If you have a problem, you need to speak your mind. Because yes. that's the only way you're going to create change. We're talking about backbone. The way that I dealt with such bullies, I remember... That's why I asked you in the beginning of this podcast. Pod yeah. 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 Oh,